Illinois Stories is brought to you by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and by the support of viewers like you. Thank you. Hello, welcome to Illinois Stories. I'm Mark McDonald in Pittsfield in front of one of the most beautiful courthouses in all of central Illinois. This courthouse in Pike County is the third courthouse to be built in Pittsfield, the second one on this very site. And as you can see, it's quite unique because it's octagonal. And I'm not sure, we're, we're, we'll try to, figure, try to find this out during the course of this program, I'm not sure there's another octagonal courthouse in the state of Illinois. Michael Boren, you're, you're on the, the board of, the, board of uh, the, the county board, right? Yes. You're also a local historian. Yes. And you and your folks are very proud of this building. We are. It's lovely. Yes, we are. We want to take care of it. Yeah, and you have been, haven't you? Doing our best, but through, we need to do more. Through, through the course of this program, we're going to talk about some of the restoration efforts that have taken place, um, and we'll get a chance to see some of the beautiful um, uh, features of, of this courthouse. And we'll also get a chance to see how it works, because it's still a working courthouse. Yes, it, it is. It houses much of county government, doesn't it? Uh, quite a bit, quite a bit. In fact, your own group, the Board of Commissioners, that you meet in here. We do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, as we look up there on the left, we can see that there's a fan going up there. That's the main courtroom, I think. Uh, yes, um, I, I think that is. So you've got you've got two courtrooms in here. Yes. Tell me about the the, the uh, stone that, that went to build this. So it, it, it's, it looks kind of interesting. Well, it's, um, um, I believe, called Bedford Limestone. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's, uh, on the inside, there's a lot of layers of bricks. But it's, the outside is limestone, which we need to do some more preservation on because oh, it's beginning to spall a little bit. And uh -huh. we need to, that's what this, we have uh, um, budgeted $100,000 for this next year for preservation for the exterior of the courthouse for that reason. Okay, so what happens is the, the limestone's healthy, but it's the, what is it, the tuck pointing, the, the, uh, the material in between the stones? Well, starts the tuck fall pointing apart. is something to think about, but the limestone itself will, will begin to spall. That's hmm. what an outer layer gets moisture oh, under it okay. and can peel off. Yeah, that's not good. That's not good. <laughs> no, it's not I read good. somewhere that, uh, that the, the, uh, the stones for the, uh, the cornerstones were, were mined locally here, were quarried locally here, which is interesting. Okay, yeah. Now, let's look at the roof a little bit. I, I can see those look like red, red. I don't know, are they slate shingles? or? Uh, I, I think so, I believe that's slate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You got a little work to do up there yet too, don't you? Uh, the, the roof up above, which we may look out later, yeah. uh, is going to need some serious work. It's, you know, any old building requires constant maintenance. You know, everything's so expensive too, isn't it? Especially it is. on an older building. Yes. Um, except building an old building wasn't expensive. <laughs> well, <laughs> that depends on your frame of reference, yeah. I guess. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Back then, uh, at, at what what sixty seventy thousand dollars took care of the whole building? Yes, sixty eight thousand dollars built the entire building That's and incredible. the furnishings. But but in that day, you know, a man worked for a dollar a day. Yeah. So uh, things yeah. were different. Yeah. You know, just in front of us here, closer in front of the flag, we got to mention this because this is one of the recent additions to the courtroom grounds. Um, this is a veterans memorial to the vet, to the veterans of Pike County in all wars, and it's a, it's a lovely. It's a lovely uh, memorial. Yes, uh, Sheriff Paul Petty is largely responsible for getting this built, and uh, it hasn't been here for very many years. Yeah, yeah, it's very nice. Well, I mentioned the dome, and I mentioned, uh, you know, I mean, you can see that the, 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 the dome, and, and the, you can see the dome all the way from uh, up as you look up the center of the, the uh, rotunda. Yes. And I think the next thing we ought to do is probably go in there and just take a look at the main feature of the building. Sounds good. Okay. Well, Michael Boren, I wanted to start here in the jury room because we're, we're about to go into the main courtroom, which is open right now, and we have to get in there before the judge decides it should be used for other things, right? Right. So we'll start in here, but the reason I wanted to start in the jury room is because we were talking about some of the original fixtures and some of the original furniture here when the courthouse was built, and this table right here is, is one of those designs, isn't it? Yes. Mm -hmm. Designed by the second architect of the courthouse. Mm -hmm. the, the first architect, he, they, didn't, they, they liked his building, but they didn't like his furniture so much. Huh? Well, it wasn't his furniture. Uh, uh, some people began to think that he was not building the building solidly enough. Mm -hmm. and an architect from Chicago came down and said, it's not strong enough, and they fired the original Is that right? architect, Henry Elliott. But, but Henry Elliott made beautiful buildings. He did. He really he did. He did, so I don't... <laughs> understand how that happened, but that's what happened here. Well, let's let's go on down into the main courtroom because what I like about this is so much of this is still the original. After you, sir, okay, is the original original equipment and uh, 
and woodwork, and the woodwork is splendid, isn't it? It is. It is. Do you want to go in this way? Uh -huh. Let's go on. Let's go over here. Okay. As you, one of the things you're struck as you walk in here is the height of the ceilings, number one. And as you can see up there, you've been able to retain all of the uh, old tin ceiling, haven't you? Yes. So many of the courthouses have drop ceilings now, you know. Yes. Uh, and they did that to, to preserve energy. But this is really beautiful because you can see how it was. This is very much as it looked when it was built, isn't it? Very much. Very much. It's a slight change, but mm -hmm. very much, I think. Mm -hmm. um, the first thing we notice when we walk in here are these, are these seats uh, for, the, for the people that are viewing the trials. Those are still pretty much the way they were, aren't they? Except for the padding that's been put on the bottom part, or we believe they're original. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And those are pretty ornate chairs. Look at the woodwork on there. They are. It used to be that a lot of people would come to view trials, yes. wasn't it? it was. And you can see what, the, the way this, this room is built. It was designed for people to come and watch court. Mm -hmm. And now with television and everybody has a full-time job, men and women, there aren't a lot of people that show up during the day, are there? They're to not. Watch court. They're not. I come and watch court sometimes, and sometimes I'm the only non-participant who mm -hmm. is observing. Mm -hmm. You know, directly above us, we were talking about the ceiling as well. Directly above us is, um, I, I guess I would call it a medallion, uh, but it's right in the middle of the room, from which an old chandelier used to hang. Yes, uh, I'll give you a picture of that. Uh, a large chandelier hung there. Uh, originally. Mm -hmm. It should still be there. Yes, uh, <laughs> and we don't know what became of it. Is that right? It disappeared? Uh, I think uh, we can ask the custodian, but I don't think he knows oh, either. Oh, doggone. That's too bad. A lot of times those things were taken down because they, they just didn't work anymore or, mm -hmm. or they needed to electrify or something, but, yeah. uh, but that, was, that just disappeared. That's a shame. It is. There's some other things that disappeared, weren't there, out of this court, out of this court system? Uh, yes, yes. And valuable. Well, yes, any document signed by Abraham Lincoln. Now, he did not practice in this courthouse, which was built in 1894, but mm -hmm. we had records uh, of some cases Lincoln handled, and somewhere along the line, every Lincoln signature has disappeared from okay. our courthouse. You know he was here, and you know he was arguing cases because his, he, his signature's on the docket. Well, uh, yes, and there are, there's still paperwork about some of the cases that he was involved in, mm -hmm. but, but no signatures no of signatures. Abraham Lincoln. That's a shame. Yeah, it is. Yeah, maybe if those turn up, you can reclaim those. Uh, well, yes, we can. By law, you can. Mm -hmm. Right over your right shoulder, one of the things that you notice in this building as you walk through, there's this rotunda, and the rotunda goes all the way up to the dome, and it's got these beautiful stained glass windows all the way up, and that's one of the things you notice in the courtroom is they built the courtroom around the rotunda. Yes. Yes, stained glass windows are all over the courthouse, mm -hmm. and they it cost a very small amount of money to get all this original stained glass uh, put in here in 1894. In fact, we were talking about the, the total price of the courthouse. What, what, what did it cost to build the courthouse? $68,000 for the entire <laughs> courthouse and all the furnishings. If, if you were going to just put the stained glass in now, it would be in excess of $68,000. Oh, I, I would think so. Oh, my I would think so. Uh, but you can see, now you have done a wonderful job because as you look above this, this wonderful woodwork that's here, um, all of these windows have been restored, haven't they? Yes, uh, I believe so. They, they uh, in fact, they, the story goes that they actually went back to the same, the same company that originally put them in. Yes, yes. They were able to refix them and and re and uh, relet them for you. And over here, you know, we hear tick tock, tick tock. Um, that clock, uh, that clock belongs here, doesn't it? Yes, belongs here, and as far as we know, it's always been in this courtroom since mm -hmm. 1894. It still works, doesn't it? Still works. <laughs> still works. They, they knew how to make them. Well, this is nice. I bet the judge appreciates this. I, um, I know that um, I think his name is Judge Brand, and we've interviewed him before. Yes. And uh, he he kind of likes the traditional, the traditional courtroom, and he must feel right at home. Then he would like this place. Yeah. I feel sure. Burdette Irwin, you've been in charge of maintenance here at the Pike County Courthouse for more than 20 years, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. So you know it pretty well. Pretty well, pretty well. <laughs> As you enter the courtroom, we, we just entered from, the, was that the north That's side? That's the north okay. door. Uh -huh. And everything, whether you go from the east, the south, the west, everything comes in here to the rotunda. Right. right. Uh -huh. Which at this time of year, you got your Pike County Christmas tree up. Right. Uh -huh. But what's really nice here is you can, you can stand here in the middle of this rotunda and you can get the full effect of what they were, t the architect was trying to do. Right. Uh -huh. Yeah. It's lovely. It's it's it's, uh, it's amazing to me to to look up and see that and see the stairway and everything. Yeah. 
yeah. you know, and, and think about when they built it, how, you know, they used, used their hands to do that. They didn't use a lot of machinery. Yeah. And to, to do all that uh, spindle work is, yeah. is just fantastic, yeah. it seemed to me. Like. And to carry that, that spiral effect all the way up to the third floor. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and my goodness, the stained glass is just gorgeous. Of course, it doesn't stay that way. You have to get that done occasionally, don't I, you get it cleaned up? Yes, and, uh, about every 10 already, years or so. Uh, really, so you're getting ready to do it again. You restored it once mm -hmm. already mm -hmm. recently, didn't you? Yes, we, we had it restored, and now we just need to keep it clean. Yeah, yeah, beautiful. Okay, well, we're in the rotunda here. Mm -hmm. uh, this, these hallways are gleaming. You must wax these all the time. <laughs> are, are, these, are these tiles original? Yes, uh -huh. they're made of terrazzo. Wow. And it is, it is original, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Gorgeous. This, this also has an interesting feature, because right in the middle of the rotunda, where the Christmas tree stands, you have what's like carved out of here, a circular, a circular, well, a, a hole. There was a mm -hmm. hole here. Yes. And now it's covered with, as you can see, it's covered with glass. What was the purpose of this? Well, that, that was the uh, air return, uh, air vent for the, the heating system. And... Uh, when they went to the gas furnace and, and put that in there, then they put the uh, glass or plastic, whatever, filled them holes. Oh, okay, okay. So, and so there used to be there used to be a vent going. Through. Yes, mm -hmm. that was that was the uh, cold air vent to uh, draw the heat. Yeah. Well, this is an improvement now because when the Christmas tree's not there, you can look right down into the basement, can't you? And you get right. some light mm -hmm. down there. Right. That's mm -hmm. cool. Mm -hmm. In fact, you can look up through there and you can see the dome from down there. Yes. <laughs> How neat is that? We, uh, we did have a, one of those Christmas multicolor uh, discs oh, yeah. that we put down there. So mm -hmm. uh, you can't actually see through it. It's, it's like obscure. You can't, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. you can't see mm -hmm. through it. Uh, but it would change colors, yeah. and the motor wore out on it. So we're looking for another one. There, well, maybe next Christmas. Maybe yeah. you can do it next Christmas. Um, what I really like about this, I got a chance to sneak upstairs, is when you when you get to the second floor, and, and you see the entrance to to the courtroom there. Mm -hmm. it, it's flanked by the, the the double stairway, which continues the spiral effect. So right. can we go up and look at that next? Sure. Okay. Sure. Well, Burdette, we're on the second floor, mm -hmm. and this is the floor where the main courtroom yes. is, and, and we'll visit that during the course of this program. But what I really like is the way they designed this. Okay, we're standing right above the Christmas tree that we were just looking at, yes, and I down know. there is the rotunda, and, they, and they've got this double stairway going up to the, to the third floor, which would have been the gallery where most of the crowd would have watched the court proceedings. Right. That, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, they... Uh... Yeah, the ceilings are high, uh, and in the summertime it was a lot cooler to come in and set in here than it was outside, and, and yeah. so they used to pack the courthouse because it was more like an <laughs> entertainment than anything else. So. Yeah, and, and you could get, in, like you say, it was cooler than being inside. Right, yeah. right. Mm -hmm. um, and these old stone buildings, they did, they did t stay a little cooler a right. lot of, in mm -hmm. a lot of cases. But this is when you talked about the woodwork, and look at, look at the... Uh, my goodness, look at this woodwork on these spindles that mm -hmm. you were talking about. You can see that every one of these has just been rotated and rotated and rotated. Right. It's beautiful. Right. Just beautiful. And to the best of my knowledge, those were probably done by hand. I don't know if mm -hmm. they had, mm -hmm. they might have had duplicating machines of some kind, but it wouldn't be the power tools that we have today. Yeah, yeah. And, and we get another really good look here if, if we look... We can look at around here, you can see the, the oodles and oodles of stained glass that you all uh, inherited. I mean, mm -hmm. it's, it's a mixed blessing because it takes a lot of care, doesn't it? Yes, it does. And mm -hmm. we're looking straight up now and you can see that they, even though you, you did a restoration work 10 years ago, they need to be cleaned up again. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, can that be cleaned by, you don't have to remove that glass to clean it. You can clean no. it on site, huh? No, yes, uh-huh. Yeah, they just, uh, basically they all uh, scaffold over the top of it. Mm -hmm. Uh, or bridge over, I guess I should say, <clears throat> and just reach down and, and clean it that way yeah. uh, with vacuum cleaner and uh, mm -hmm. then, you know, by hand with a cloth. Mm -hmm. And you have to get, in some cases, you have to get above it to clean the top. And I was going to ask right. you if we could get above it to take a look at, at yes. the, at the yes. top of the dome. Can, there's another interesting story up there because there's an old water tank yes. up there, isn't there, right. that used a, to be used? A cast iron water tank. Yeah. So. We can take and a look that, at that. That used to be, they'd pump the water up there, and that was uh, 
then give them the water pressure for down here. Mm -hmm. So yeah. they pump the water up in the tank and then the gravity flow coming down to, for their water pressure. Yeah, pretty smart, pretty smart. Well, let's, let's go a little higher. Okay, okay. <laughs> all right. Well, Burdette, on our way up, um, my goodness, everything is so big. Look at this truss, for instance. Yeah. Um, you can see, now you can see what spans the inside of this dome. But they weren't messing around, were they? No, they, they were. They wanted to make sure that they, they didn't get any sag. They were uh, very thorough with the, with, you know, with the sturdiness of it. They, over here you've got, these boards are all bolted together. You've got one, two, three, four, five, six, two bys. 12s and one one by 12 mm -hmm. all bolted together to make the one board wow. and uh, and then if you look up you can see that they used some steel there right to reinforce that as well huh? right and what that's for is to hold it up to keep it from sagging that mm -hmm. whenever there was any down pressure at all they, they made something else to pull up on it so it mm -hmm. wouldn't wouldn't sag on them. and it sure seems to be working so far doesn't it yes mm -hmm. yeah Okay, well, let's continue yes, our trek upstairs, if it's okay with okay. you. Okay. Cool. Well, Burdette, we finally got above to what we're looking down on the glass dome here. Right, yes. And, and it's interesting, because I thought when we got up here, I would notice that this dome was, was, was being suspended. But it's not, it's actually built right into the tower. Isn't right, it? right, it's built right into it, and it's uh, angled in such a way that, that the weight of the top pushes down and pushes out to the side, mm -hmm. and therefore it isn't suspended. And, and, and when your guys get up here to clean this, of course, they can't climb out on that glass. No, uh, no, they have, they have a bridge that, that goes from this uh, railing right here mm -hmm. to across over there, and uh, then they lay down on their stomach and vacuum that off with the yeah. vacuum cleaner and brush. And, well, then and they have to put some, they have some kind of solution, I imagine, that they use too, which is, right. oh, what mm -hmm. awful work. That's, I bet you're glad that's not one of your assignments. Right, right. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay, one other thing while we're up here. You know, you, what you see is, is looking up, you see that bright light that comes through yes. the glass. How, uh -huh. how, do you, how do you get that effect? Uh, that's that uh, mercury vapor light that I was talking about. Okay. Uh, it's a 400 watt mercury vapor uh, light bulb in uh -huh. there and it runs 24 hours a day, 365 oh, okay. days a year. It's to uh, simulate the sun. The sun used, to, there was windows up above and uh, the sun used to shine through there and that was the yeah. natural light yeah. for yeah. the courthouse. And you, if you got lucky, you would see on a sunny day, you'd get a lot of light, a lot of bright light coming in and mm -hmm. oftentimes got almost none at all. Like right, this. Yeah. right. Well, this on took a day like today, it was dark. Yeah, yeah. Well, thanks so, for bringing us up. And as you can see across there, we've built it in, and that's because uh, of the fact that when we were downstairs talking, the air all went up, mm -hmm. and we was losing a lot of heat. So we boxed this all in. I see. So we could stop that loss of heat. Mm -hmm. Well, Burdette, we're, we're nearly, we're getting close to the top, but, uh, but we were just looking at that light. And now we've gotten above it as well, huh? Right, right. This is the housing uh, that goes over the top of it to kind of keep the dirt uh, away from the stained glass down there as mm -hmm. much as possible. As you can see a while ago, though, it, some still gets there. But this was built for that, mm -hmm. uh, to keep the dirt out and just to kind of protect that light bulb. Yeah. And it's a 400 watt mercury vapor light bulb, so uh, it lasts a long time. Yeah, I think yeah. I've changed it once in 23 that, years. That's good, because you don't want to climb up here and change it every day. No. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell right now I'm a little out of breath. <laughs> okay. All right, let's go on higher. <laughs> well, if you get up to this level, and we're roughly halfway up to the top of the, the dome here, um, we, t we talked about that water uh, tank, and yes. it's empty now, but this used to, this used to take care of the water needs that was of the county yes. courthouse, didn't it? Yes, uh -huh. they had a ram pump down in the basement and it would pump up the water and, and then over here you can see the, the uh, overflow pipe. 
So they would fill it until it came out the overflow and then they would stop and it was somebody's job mm -hmm. to keep that full. So they'd have water pressure down, downstairs. I, I'm just gonna wager that this thing stays here forever. Nobody's gonna ever wanna move this out of here. Probably right? not. Yeah. Probably not. We had the top off of it in, in uh, 90 and 91 and they didn't take it out then. So <laughs> okay. probably won't. It stays. Well, Burdette, at this level where we were looking down on the light bulb, this is really a good opportunity now to be able to see outside onto the roof, uh, see the town square, but also yeah. to look at some of the work that needs to be done. Let's let's take a look at this roof. This yeah. is the next project, isn't it? Yes, uh, I hope so anyway. Yeah. 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 Uh, it has several cracks in it, and uh, we've had a contractor look at it, and he says that really we need to take everything off and start over because of the weight of it, that there's a lot of weight on that roof. Mm -hmm. And if we add more weight to it, then you know, it may collapse. It's that side. flat surface that's the problem, right? Yes. Uh -huh. okay, and you got to rubberize that again. You got rid of that and rubberize right. it again. Gotcha. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, Michael, we're looking at this quilt of the uh, of the courthouse. So this, of course, is where we're standing. If you walk in the north entrance, the first thing you see is this massive quilt, that's right. which was made uh, in 1986 by the uh, Pittsfield Star Quilters, one of your local ladies' groups that does quilts. And not every courthouse has this kind of demonstration, does it? No, it uh, was quite an undertaking. And uh, the wooden case was done by Ralph Knott and has several structures that are important in Pike County history, some of which exist and some which yeah. unfortunately no longer exist. M many of them are still here. Uh, many we, of them we, are. We were looking at the courthouse. And this is interesting because I think the artist who, who made this little square, their, their names are next to it. Yes. Um, but let's go all the way up to the top there. You know that Nicolay home up there, which is still here. Still here. That's a familiar name to historians, isn't yeah. it? John George Nicolay uh, was born in Germany, but lived and grew up in Pike County and was a newspaper editor and publisher here in, in Pittsfield. And then he was the first person that Abraham Lincoln hired when he decided to run for president in 1860. Mm -hmm. And he served as his personal secretary. His for private secretary quite for all while, of his presidency. Yeah. Yes. Wow. And his that home is still here, as we mentioned, still here, and it's on the Talking Houses it's Tour. It's on the Talking Houses Tour, yeah. yes, on East Washington Street. Now this old East School, it also is still here, and it's a remarkable structure. It is. It was built during the American Civil War, uh, at a time when the nation was under a lot of stress, but our forefathers thought they had faith in the future, and they built this wonderful old building. It was designed by uh, Van Osdell, I think his first name is James, uh, from Chicago, an architect, the same man that designed the governor's mansion in Springfield. Wow. And I, I've been told this is the only structure by Van Osdell that has not been uh, changed somewhat over the mm -hmm. years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And it now serves as the Historical Society. Right, Society. the Historical Society owns it. It was going to be torn down by the school board. We were able to save it and we've been able to preserve it, but it's a uh, very expensive undertaking. We do have a museum in, yeah. in it also. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, and let's move down here. Now, a lot of people, this is still on the square, the Strauss Brothers store. Yes. That's not the Strauss Brothers anymore, though, is it's it? It's the Red Dome Inn, and many people know that. It's one of the finest eateries around this area, and uh, yes, all those buildings are now part of the Red Dome Inn, but it was the Strauss' store when I was a little boy. Been here a long time. Yes. And the Strauss family was well known because they lived, they, they made some money too in their store. They did, they, they, they did. built a, a really nice house. A nice home and that was deeded to uh, the city of Pittsfield in, in 1949, mm -hmm. as you see there, and it's now the community center. And the, it's also- The, fam the family gave it, gave, it, gave it to Pittsfield. And now it's the community center. Yes. That's wonderful. Mm -hmm. That's what, This is a nice little primer for history of Pittsfield, isn't it? It is, it is. Yeah. We uh, have students come here and uh, we try to tell them about mm -hmm. it. Uh, yeah to remind them of various structures and then to say, I'm sorry that some uh, that were here in my lifetime when I was younger are no longer They're here. no longer here. Well, history changes, doesn't it? It does. Michael, thank you. Well, you're very welcome. Thanks for coming. Restoration is never complete when you're dealing with a building that's more than 100 years old. $100,000 has been budgeted to take care of that flaking limestone on the exterior. And when that's finished, the next project is the roof. With another Illinois story in Pittsfield, I'm Mark McDonald. Thanks for watching.
Illinois Stories is brought to you by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and by the support of viewers like you. Thank you. For a DVD copy of the program you've just seen, send 1995 to Network Knowledge, P.O. Box 6248, Springfield, Illinois 62708. Be sure to include the program name, subject, and when the program aired. You can also order with your credit card by calling 800-232-3605.